everyone. My name is Catalina Rios. I was born in Mexico and raised in Southwest Detroit, where I have been living for 20 years. Uh, I am documented, but in a few years, we'll be undocumented again. Just, I guess, depends what happens, right? Um, currently, I'm in grad school at U of M, School of Social Work. And so far, it has been a tough time for black and brown students um, due to numerous racist incidents. Um, that being said, I am continuously making an effort to educate and hold myself accountable for whatever I can contribute um, to spaces in whatever capacity. Um, I was asked uh, to come here and talk about my experience. I began organizing in the immigrant rights movement in 2009. I'm just gonna, I'll pick it up at the end. Uh, the time um, when the DREAM Act uh, was the thing to, in which to fight for. Uh, we organized rallies, phone bankings, campaigns, and civil disobedience actions against anti-immigrant legislation. Um, in an effort to pass the DREAM Act bill. In 2013, I was arrested along with other DREAMers and undocumented parents in Alabama. The first act of civil disobedience on record involving students and parents together. Uh, even though the DREAM Act did not pass, those efforts were not in vain. Many grassroots organizations were formed as a result of the undocumented organizers' work which along with undocumented youth began to pressure the Obama administration to pass any relief and we ended up with DACA. Uh, but DACA was never freedom. Instead, it was a tool to silence undocumented organizers and in a lot of instances, that kind of worked. During my involvement in the movement, I did not think about the implications of the kind of work I was doing. And that is why I decided to step back from the immigrant rights movement and educate myself further because I personally felt something was not connecting. Through a lot of reflections, reading, and dialogue, I saw how the messaging we use in the immigrant rights movement was problematic. It erases documented and undocumented black folks. For example, the term dreamer perpetuates respectability rhetoric of the good and bad immigrant uplifting stories of, uh, of undocumented valedictorians while dehumanizing our differences. That messaging also criminalizes our own parents. It's more focused on what legal, on what legal is than, than what is actually happening through displacement created by violent foreign policy. I have learned, a, uh, I have learned one thing. A country that does not value black lives will never validate and humanize anyone else's. I'm going to say this again. A country that does not value black folks, their lives, and their past will never be able to build a foundation for black and brown futures. So what do undocumented folks fighting for citizenship mean in an anti-black context? especially when black citizenship is disenfranchised in an infinite number of ways. Anti-blackness is so heteronomic within the structure of our everyday society and institutions. Our environment is literally built to erase black experiences. I thought a lot about this dynamic, especially during the time DACA was in danger. I noticed countless of people motivated to help docu documented folks Many were speaking out against the decision and organizing um, to raise funds for application renewals. I'm not saying um, the support is unwelcome, but what I am questioning is why don't we see those same folks mobilizing in support of the Black Lives Matter movement? Why is it so hard for people to say Black Lives Matter? Is it because dreamers are seen as innocent and good, but other folks aren't? To work towards liberation, we need to understand that blacks' lives need to matter first and foremost. I mean, what are we giving up in doing so? When the very environment we inhabit uses skin color as a weapon for the purpose of dehumanization and thus profit through incarceration. So how do we move forward? We need to organize and center our spaces and conversations. Be willing and ready to step back and give up our assigned positions. We need to find ways of understanding through our experiences 
and center our individual and everyday efforts around those whose existence is deemed threatening to capitalist systems built to kill us. I challenge those who feel threatened by this motion to go out of your comfort zones, but, ju but sorry, but just, sorry, I got accent. By just calling your um, state representatives to create change and stand together with us to challenge anti-blackness within your communities and within yourselves. We say, fuck your borders and fuck your prisons who are ripping our families apart. I know I am privileged to share my truth, but it's time to listen to other folks. It's time to listen to your black neighbor, your black core worker, your friend, your loved one, when they're telling you to step up. It's time for that. Thank you. Thank you.